Hey guys, I'm Dan Henry and I'm a custom success technical architect here at MuleSoft. In this Friends of Max video series, I'm going to be talking to you about Anypoint API Community Manager, which provides a next-gen developer experience to help you build and grow API ecosystems. Today, we're going to talk about API groups, its use case, and how you can display these in API Community Manager. Let's get started. So why use API groups? Well, oftentimes an API consumer's needs require a combination of capabilities that may or may not be covered by a single API product. For example, an internal API consumer building a commerce experience would require the capabilities to aggregate order, product, and custom information in their app. Instead of offering siloed API products, API product owners should collaborate with line of businesses partners, or external developers to build packaged solutions from disparate APIs using API groups. Such experiences provide value for API consumers by simplifying discovery, access, and consumption of APIs for consumer-centric use cases with one application and contract, and API product owners by reducing operational complexity in SLAs, policies, and dependencies. So let's talk about prerequisites. The first thing we need to do is make sure that we have an API group configured in API Manager for this to be displayed in API Community Manager as well. So I have this one here called Out of the Box Outfitters Headless E-Commerce. And if I click into here, you can see that I have the shipping, order status, and product information API. If I head over to Exchange, you'll see that I've got some documentation about this API group explaining what's in it, some support and SLA information as well. You can of course add categories and tags and this will enrich the experience. Another thing to remember is to head over to group instances and make sure that this group instance is public. The next thing to do is to make sure that each of our APIs have instant labels. This is going to ensure that our API consumers in our community have a much more readable title for each of our APIs. So if you head over to API in administration and click on each one, you can see here I've got the label order status hyphen sandbox. Now you could add the version number here as well if you'd like, it's really up to you. You see I've also done that with product information. And I've also done it with shipping as well. So now we're in ACM Administrator and we're going to add this API group. You'll see here we already have the APIs from that API group in the community. That's not a prerequisite. So we're going to search for that API group. And there it is. So you can see that there. We'll click Add to Community. And just to make this a bit more readable for our API community members. And we'll give a description. And then we'll replace the icon. There we go. We then have this banner highlighting the fact that these APIs already exist in the community. So if we modify these, it's also going to update those APIs as well. Now, of course, if you didn't have these APIs in the community beforehand, then you would have to create or rename the headers and the description and add some pictures as well. But being as we already have them here, we can leave it, set the visibility to everyone and click apply. And now if we go back, you can see that API group in the community. Now we have our API group published in API Community Manager. And if I scroll down, you can see that it's now displayed in this carousel that I've built for API groups. But if we click on group details, you can see that the page doesn't really show us which APIs are in that group. We can of course see the information from the API documentation, but how do I get through to those other API groups? 
The reason for this is that we're currently using the API detail page, which is designed specifically for Singular APIs. Let me show you what I mean by that. If we head over to Community Builder, and then we go to the page structure up here, and click on the Community API Object section, and then API Detail. So you can see this page has been designed with a Singular API in mind. We have the API header, the API access requester for that single API, and some tabs with API documentation and API console for that specific API. So now we're going to show you how to use page variation to display our API groups. Page variations allows you to create alternative variations of the selected page by setting an audience criteria based page visibility. So if we head up to page properties, and I can click on page variations. And then I click on new page variation. And we choose the layout we want to apply. I'm actually going to use the flexible layout, which gives us more control over the page structure. I give it a name. So API group detail. And click create. And now we have this API group detail page as displayed here and there's nothing much on this page for now, it's a blank canvas. We'll get back to that in a short moment. First, we're going to go to Page Properties, and we're going to go to the API Group Detail, this little arrow here, and click Assign. Now, there's no audience specifically for API Groups yet, so we're going to create one by clicking New Audience, and giving it a name of API Group Viewer. And then for the criteria, we're going to choose Record, is community API and it's record type and then we'll select name and this will equal API group then we click save and assign so now that we've done that we can go back to the page and start building it and adding some more detail so first of all I'm going to add a new section We'll skip that for now. And in this section, I'm going to make it two columns, but I'm going to do a distribution of nine and three, just as an option. For the top section, I'm going to add an API header. That seems a bit too um, big, so I'm going to go back to the section style. Just change the section height to the smallest possible so it snaps to the side of that header. And then in this second section, for the left hand side, I'm going to add the API documentation viewer. And then on the right hand side, I'm going to add the API access requester. And then I'm also going to add unanswered questions as well. Now, what we also want to show is the children of this API group or the APIs that sit within this API group. And we can do that with the API carousel. So if we select this and I'll put it just above the API documentation viewer. Now when we go into this API carousel, we can of course make all of those regular changes we would with an API carousel. But one of the most important things that we do need to do is change what we're showing. And what we want to show is the children of this API. So we select that. And this will show the children in a carousel in this page. Another option is to use the list mode and that will display the APIs in a list mode. Now when you're in the Community Builder, you won't be able to see what that looks like, but when we preview an actual API group, you will see that when we click Publish. So once you've got your email confirming that your change is alive, we can actually go back to one of our API groups in our community. So we can scroll down in that community, click on group details for this API group. And what we can see here is the APIs in that group. And we see that detail, the description that we gave and the API group description as well. We can click on product information, for example, and we can see the information about that API and then head back to the API group 
We can also request access. And then from here, we can choose the API group instance and the SLA tier. And we can see how many requests and time period we get for the SLA tier. I'm going to create a new application called ABOS Mobile App and click request. I can then head over to my applications and we'll see that ABOS Mobile App here. Click view. And you'll see there's no data at the moment because we haven't started calling from this client application. But we can see this obviously pending review as well. So that's just how you create an API group, add it to your community, create a page variation to display it, and request access to that API group. Thanks again for watching this Friends of Max demonstration. Feel free to leave a comment, check out the links below the video, or have a watch of our other Friends of Max videos too. I look forward to seeing you again soon.